everyone welcome to my channel my name is amanda this is a vlog of my late autism and adhd diagnosis today is probably going to be a very vulnerable video i'm feeling quite burnt out i often use this vlog as a way to process what i'm feeling and i have a lot of complex emotions coming up for me today it's the day after Christmas, and uh, my Christmas went pretty well. I hope for anybody who celebrates that you had some happy moments throughout the day, if not a magical, complete day. Uh, for me, it so a lot of lead up to Christmas was stressful. I was not necessarily looking forward to the day for myself, but I wanted it to be a good day for my kids, my husband, and I want to get back to a place where I enjoy Christmas again. Um, the last couple of years being in autistic burnout, Christmas has felt more like a chore than something that I've actually wanted to do, but I want to get back to that place because I know I used to enjoy Christmas. Well, um, yesterday on Christmas, I texted an old friend, Merry Christmas. And a lot of times on social media, I try to, you know, keep my friends' lives private. This person isn't an actual current friend anymore. I definitely don't want to say anything that would reflect negatively on them. I care deeply for this person still, but I am hurt and I am going to use this space to process my emotions about what I'm feeling. Um, this was a friend I've known since college and I say, I use the term found family. Um, I considered her my best friend for many years. I thought of her as a sister. I've talked about her before in a video a long, long time ago. Well, two years ago, we had a discussion. And that's where I learned that even though I considered her a dear, dear close friend, she had, over the course of our friendship, felt like she drifted away and thought of me as a fond acquaintance. And so our energies were mismatched for many years. And I was left just constantly feeling like I was chasing after her. It's very common for a lot of autistic people. We often miss social cues. I missed the fact that she had pulled back so much. I wrote it all off every time as meaning different things or you know, she's busy, she has young children, you know. And, but we had an actual conversation where she was very blunt with me, which is what I need as an autistic person. And I was very hurt. And, but it, she wasn't somebody who I could just delete out of my life. Um, obviously she could have done that to me. She could have unfriended me on the different apps or whatnot. Um, she didn't do that either. And so for the last two years, I've sent her, you know, a happy birthday text and Merry Christmas. And when her kids first day of school, I, you know, sent her a, oh, they're looking so big, you know, kind of text message, trying to keep it into that acquaintance realm. But it's very hard for me because I am the kind of person who gives like 100% of myself to friendships. I struggle with acquaintance versus a close friend versus a best friend. Like these labels get very muddled in my head. I just give my all to my friends. And it's hard for me to have acquaintances. Um, And that's not 100% true. Like I do have people in my life who 
I'm friendly with, like my neighbor, who I don't think of as a friend, so they would be considered an acquaintance. But <laughs> I guess, especially since she was such a close friend, to downgrade to an acquaintance, um, my brain can't really hold that space. And people go from acquaintance to friend friend very quickly in my brain. I also feel like a lot of people are eager to get closer to other people. So that in itself is a little strange, but hold on, my brain is trying to put a thought together. There are people that you just don't match energies with. Um, there was a lady in one of my mom's clubs one time who just immediately I could be respectful to her. I could you know, interact with her in a professional manner via club business and stuff. But I knew this lady and I were never going to be friends. So I do get that, you know, not everybody on this earth is going to be buddy, buddy and, you know, best of friends. Right. Um, I have no, no doubts about that. There's a lot of people that, you know, I just wouldn't be interested in being friends and they wouldn't be interested in being friends with me. But when you were a friend with somebody and then suddenly they lose interest in you. Um, I know that happens in relationships a lot. I, you know, have been very blessed that my husband was my first boyfriend and then we got married and we have a very strong um, relationship. So I've never actually gone through a romantic breakup before. But platonic breakups, people don't really talk about as much. Anyway, back to, so this morning, so I messaged her Merry Christmas yesterday, and this morning she wrote back and said Merry Christmas, and then she told me that her brother and his kids had recently been diagnosed with autism, and then she said a couple of different things in a paragraph about their autistic a diagnosis that and behaviors and and verbiage that was not actually correct about autism but I didn't want to correct her I'm like okay it's not my place to correct her I'm just gonna let that go but I didn't respond to her and then she asked me a pretty personal question and I'm not usually an open book with people. Like, I don't have anything to hide. But I also knew that if I answered this question and even gave her some more information of, and answers to the questions that she was asking about her brother and nephews and stuff, which, you know, I obviously would love to be a resource for her, but it just didn't feel authentic, you know? It felt like she was asking out of a curiosity, not from a place of wanting to be a friend. And so I had to step back for a minute. I, and this was all through text, you know, so I was able to take my time and I constructed some boundaries for myself and explained to her that I would love to be able to, you know, answer these questions, but I cannot give that information about myself to her because she's no longer in a place that is in a position where she would reciprocate that same level of friendship. And, as, you know, I told her it was really hard for me 
to say this and write this to her. And I had sent her these Merry Christmases and these greetings because I wanted her to know in what I considered a socially acceptable way that I've, you know, have her in my thoughts and that if she ever did want to potentially look into becoming a closer friend with me again, I'm open to the idea. Um, obviously my trust is a little bit going to be guarded, but, um, and so I told her that's why I said Merry Christmas, but I can't go into more personal details because I'm autistic and because I don't know how to differentiate a, an acquaintance from an intimate platonic friend. That is something that my brain struggles with. Now, other autistic people are going to be different, but my autistic brain cannot differentiate these levels of friendship. And I would slip right back into that role where I'm giving and giving and she isn't giving in return. And so I typed all that out to her and then she just wrote back, I understand or understood. And then um, I care about you too. And that was it. And while when I send these like Merry Christmases and these, you know, happy birthdays to her, there's a big part of me that isn't expecting any kind of change of the status of this friendship. I realized this morning that there is a deep part of me that I guess did hope that one day this friendship would heal. And after today, I don't know that that's possible, but it's really hard to cut somebody out of my life. It's not something that I would do lightly or take lightly, but that interaction happened several hours ago and I have been in a very much state of upset and turmoil since then. And it's just not worth my mental health. And so, I mean, I think I do need to unfollow her from some different social medias and stop sending her the greetings. I've made it clear that if her perspective ever changed, I would be open to being friends again. I don't know. Um, and I just have to trust that. And the thing is, if she did, I don't know how I would respond in the future because again, I've been hurt so many times, but we were friends for, you know, over 23 years, a long friendship. And it's just hard. Recently, I made a video um, kind of entertaining the idea that I might have CPTSD complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And after making that video and talking to so many fellow autistic and ADHD people online, pretty much all of us who have been late diagnosed consider themselves also um, having CPTSD. And so that was very validating because I just never really have taken the time to understand what trauma is or means or what it looks like for different people. Um, I think it's a subject I've always avoided because um, it was like a way for my brain to protect myself because it would touch a little too close to home, right? So it was something that I just never looked into or learned about. But 
uh, undiagnosed autism does cause trauma. And one of the things that has been traumatic is just a brain pattern that has imprinted, um, imprinted in my brain that basically anytime I'm spending time with people, I wonder um, if they actually want to spend time with me. They're just tolerating me. Um, if they are just using me to get information, um, I have a hard time trusting that people want to be with me for the sake of myself as a person that they want to be friends with. And it's things like my friendship, for lack of better terms, with this one lady and being ghosted by so many people over the course of my life and so many friendships that ended in traumatic drama traumatic and dramatic ways um i have had you know some friendships that just naturally run their course and drifted apart you know some friendships do that but being autistic um you know, undiagnosed autistic, I have just had more than a allistic person's share of friendships that ended without me understanding why, because of me not understanding the social cues that were happening or going on. And that has caused long term trauma to my brain because going forward trying to make new friends is a struggle because I have such trust issues now um before my diagnosis I was just there was kind of like desperation of need of myself of like w wanting people to be my friend and my mask my autistic mask which, you know, formed to protect me from society, molded myself into being what any other human needed or wanted me to be. So from a very young age, my brain would see what another person needed me to be, and I would become that person. I didn't know I was doing this my brain protected it, like dissociated the fact that I was turning myself into what these other people were interested in and liked. Um, you know, if all of a sudden they liked a certain movie, well, then I liked that certain movie because it was a new interest, you know, and part of that is also being ADHD and. Um, like I love learning lots of new things and stuff. So part of it was sort of natural and valid, but not really. It was more of me becoming what another person needed me to be. And it was just this like desperation rolling off of me that I didn't know I had other people could feel it um when someone is extra eager to be your friend sometimes it does come off as like um you know i hate to use the word too much but that's what i got accused of being called all the time amanda you're too much and now after my diagnosis um and seeing my mask and being aware of my mask and understanding that i was like really you know the term that a lot of people use is people pleaser and i'm like unconstructing deconstructing all of that and now it's like i'm having a hard time if somebody wants to be my friend trusting at all that they actually want to be my friend um and i'm having to kind of tell my brain over and over, you know, that I, you know, am somebody that people want to spend time with and I'm not too much and the right people are out there that value me. 
And it's just going to take time, I'm guessing, for my brain to re-pattern itself because right now it's in a trauma pattern. And I'm recognizing that, but it's so deep that it's just automatic way of responding to situations. And the message from this, you know, ex-friend for lack of better terminology just really hit hard this morning and I'm doing my best to process it so I can put it aside and, you know, move on with my life. People can be dear, dear people and they might not be the right people for you to have in your life. They might the timing might be bad the energies might be bad i don't know i just know that it's common for autistic people to struggle in these ways we struggle with naming friendships trusting friendships understanding that somebody wants to be our friend unless they come out and like bluntly say it, hey, we are friends. I, you know, often won't think of myself as someone's friend until they say it. <sighs> and, you know, other humans are going through their own friend struggles. So communication is always the best. But that's the other thing that I've learned is that oftentimes when I open myself up to vulnerability and share like how I'm feeling about somebody, then that's when I learned that our intentions are mismatched. And then I'm left going, oh, I thought of you as a lot closer than you obviously are thinking of me. And that's just never a good feeling to be left with. But if you don't put that out there and be vulnerable, then you're, it still exists. You just don't have language or words for it at that point. Just one last thing that I kind of want to say before I wrap up, and it's being an autistic adult and the struggles that I have with friendships it often feels like I'm back in like middle school. And the way that I talk about friendships is the same level of processing that a middle schooler might have and so like cognitively i'm aware of that like most adults don't talk about their friendships in the same way that i am processing and a lot of that is the autistic you know diagnostic criteria of social differences um we just literally actually part of our disability struggle with friendships to that degree and another part of it is just that I think, uh, hold on, it, it went out of my head. Allistic people, like you hear all over the internet that it's hard to make friends in today's adult society. So it is a common um, human experience for many adults to be struggling with creating and making friendships. Um, but then when you add autism onto that, it just is ex like um, exponentially more difficult. And, you know, I understand that an allistic person is struggling to meet somebody. When you add in autism, <laughs> this is not even like comparable, I think, because of all of the added social cues and reading between the lines and the context and the mismatched energies. Um, again, a lot of times autistic people, we will jump to a more intimate platonic friendship way faster than an allistic person. So 
like, yeah. Anyway, I hope that, um, like usual, you found something useful in this video. If you did, please, um, I hate to say it, I don't usually do it, but hit the thumbs up and leave a comment. My engagement has been pretty low lately, and I make these videos to process for myself, but I also make them to help bring more awareness about autism in general and for to just make a better world for the next autistic generation. And so I really do have the hope that my videos will spread further and wider. So I appreciate that. And until the next time, bye guys.